to our business shorts event. Just a bit of background, um, these events actually came into being through feedback from our own clients who said to us, having the opportunity to network with each other and with other people, they thought would be beneficial to their business. So that is why we gathered here today. Anyway, um, we usually get a different speaker every time um, to come and talk to us about something that we hope um, everyone will find interesting from a business perspective. And today we're lucky enough to have Evelyn Samuel with us. Um, just a little bit about Evelyn. Um, she's been involved in branding as a sales tool um, for over 20 years now. She won the Prince of Wales Award for Advertising in 1980 in the UK. And a little closer to home in Malaysia in 2010, she created a new market segment for NTV7 by scripting and hosting a TV program for urban professionals. Um, Evelyn basically talks to people and assists them in reaching their company objectives by increasing sales through actually effectively branding their business. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Evelyn, seeing as she is clearly the expert. So Evelyn, would you like to take over? It's such a pleasure to be here and to share with you um, something that is, I'm very passionate about. If you'll see in red is the brand. So in, that was 1980, it was a community radio wanting to steal more listener time. And so they appealed to the community. And what we did was the Prince of, uh, we did an environmental project and it won the Prince of Wales Award. And then later on moved on to doing something for the newly set up American Embassy in Brunei. Now there you can see huge difference in culture. You had the superpower Americans and the Malay Muslim monarchy Brunei, which was the richest company in the world, at the, uh, country in the world at that time. So they wanted to do business together. They, they needed to have some cross-cultural exchange so that people could talk at the same level. So that was a lot of fun to do. That was also in the 80s. And then a uh, little bit more recently in uh, Malaysia, two TV stations, NTV7, you will see that everything is linked to a brand. So here we had NTV7 is the feel good station and they wanted a new uh, sector of urban professionals who speak English because their audience wasn't English speaking, they wanted an English speaking uh, sector. So I did something on how to address the negative areas of life in a positive manner and then RTM2 is a family channel and they wanted to inculcate better values among the youth. They felt the youth was, you know, <laughs> going in a kind of a different direction which may not be quite so family oriented. So that was even more fun to do because what the producer did was bring in a lot of role models by way of film stars and national sports stars. So that's where we got the youth to, to tune in. And so this is how, by, by tapping into the brand or the essence of the brand, we actually got more sales for these people. So a little bit of background on branding. Um, many of us may have forgotten, may not even know how branding actually began. Actually, branding started with just an iron which you put onto an animal, cattle actually, cattle branding, to show ownership marking because they would wander around. And how would you know whether what had wandered around was yours or someone else's? And that was really the start of branding. Now, unfortunately, that idea of branding still um, remains in a lot of people's minds. They think that branding is just advertising. And it really isn't, because today people don't really pay for your logo or for your corporate colors or for your uniform. They actually pay for customer experience. And here is Cartier. They've got a very new, wonderful video which shows, uh, they're of course jewelers, and it shows that people pay for the experience of going to a fine jeweler all around the world. That video is really worth watching. It really takes you all around the world. Another experience of branding which I believe you are as familiar with as I am is, for example, when I came up the lift today, it opened and there were Serve Corp staff ready to, to greet me, and the table was all laid out. 
I came in, everything was beautifully done, and you know, that's the Surf Corp brand. Everything is always impeccably done, spoken well, details are um, always taken care of very well, and it's customer experience. And certainly that's why I've been with Surf Corp for several years. They didn't tell me to say this, and they certainly didn't pay me. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, creating the prosperity of the brand is really um, about creating a culture. So if you want to make money from a brand, you actually have to create a culture, and it means staff training. It doesn't mean just the packaging. The packaging is very important, but it actually means training your staff to deliver your brand in such a way that you will show your shareholders that they're gonna make money out of it. Because the marketing people will have lots of great ideas and the financial people will say, can't afford it. So you actually have to combine the two and show why you can afford it. Now here are two branding icons who are great friends, Sir Richard Branson and Tansri Tony Fernandez. And both of these men are known for boldness and conviction. They have the vision, they see they can do something, they're just gonna go for it. So Richard Branson tells a wonderful story of how uh, he went for uh, a great publicity exercise. He was called in by the bank manager and said, we're not gonna support you. You know, this is costing too much. And so what he did, this was, and he says it happened on a Friday, and they were gonna call in all their loans in the following week on, on the uh, following Friday. So he called in all his friends and he, laid out his plan and where it was going to go. So, you know, what I'm saying here is the majority of people, when you face with uh, a situation where your banker is not going to support you anymore, you start quivering and quaking. But Sir Richard saw the potential for sales. His friends saw the potential for sales. So what he did was, within a week, he changed bankers. The Tony Fernandez story, you probably know, he did not buy profitability. He bought debt. And he made it uh, into something very, very profitable. So there we go. Branding really is about making sales, but it, it's about having conviction in your brand. It's about being bold as well. Now, there's a profit paradox, actually, because in order to sell, we need to go beyond the dollar transactions because it is about people and is about money. And this is the most important part. 20% of a brand is what you see. And you know actually that's the most expensive part and that is why people associate branding with advertising because that's the first impression, that's the image. But 80% of the brand is actually the delivery. So when you train staff well, you actually lock them in and lock your competitors out. Because when you train them so well to deliver your particular brand, they will actually become your best salespeople. So here are some examples of how you add on to the culture. Here are some tactics on the left and the sales results on the right. So what we see here is that marketing leads to the sales, whether it's cash transactions or the credit transactions. And so marketing is actually a very, very important part of branding and advertising is only a subset of branding. So what we can learn from this is actually we're not branding enough. If we want more sales, we're just going to have to brand a little bit more. Um, I'll take questions a little bit later, just so that I don't bore you with going through, through the text. Okay. Now, the LinkedIn phenomenon is something really uh, a fantastic story. And um, this is the founder, Konstantin Gerich. He was here last year. This uh, was a, really a historic event for Malaysia. It was called Silicon Valley Comes to Malaysia. And 17 icons, these are whiz kids who become millionaires and billionaires, you know, just from having good ideas, well, more than good ideas, of course. But he was one of them, and it was really wonderful to have the opportunity to talk and to ask questions. And now the alumni, we're all on the same um, forum where we, we can pick into his brains. And what he has to say is that many startups fail, not because they never reach their customer, <coughs> sorry, not because they don't have a good product, 
but because they never reach the customer. And you might be able to identify with this. You might have felt some frustration at having a great product or a good service and people aren't buying it. And that may be because they're just not aware of it. Um, one of the most popular brand strategies right now is what we call the freemium model. And here are two brands that are very uh, well known. LinkedIn, of course, it is, what is LinkedIn? It's, it's, just, it's, it's a database. Uh, IT based and it's about work experience where you actually put your resume online. You tell people what you want them to know about your work experience and Skype is about phone calls. The freemium model is so called and it's very popular, a lot of people are adopting it right now, is to give away services free of charge. Services that people actually like. So how do you make money? Well, what LinkedIn does is they have premium um, sources of revenue, which is job ads, text ads, and paid memberships. And Skype has, uh, you pay if you want to use a phone outside of Skype. Now does this really work? If there are any people down here who are planning budgets and just wondering, does this work or not? Well, this, this is how it worked for uh, LinkedIn they actually went public last year, about a year ago. And the shares sold for even far more. But of course, you need to have pretty high volume. Skype does the same thing. There are three reasons uh, for having sales failures. And we really need to be realistic and look at that as well. One of them is we are upselling to people who don't have the budget to buy. Or sometimes we're pitching to the wrong audience they don't have the authority to buy. They may be very interested, or we might be pitching to the wrong segment. And they might be interested, but no motivation to buy. So it might be good marketing strategy, but don't get too upset yourself if you don't close a sale, because they're not yet ready to, to buy from you. So what we need to do in this case is to inform and educate publics on what we actually do uh, in terms of promoting your brand, how to promote your brand. And there's a um, couple of examples that are happening right now. One is the Malaysian Institute of Management. It is a training provider and wanting to rebrand itself. So what they've been doing is having very high level conferences where members can come and meet with ministers. Last week, it was a deputy prime minister. Prior to that, it was uh, Idris Jala talking about transformation and all of that, and you actually get a chance to ask questions. So in marketing terms, this is called customer engagement. <laughs> okay, so what MIM is doing is rebranding by saying, we're a force to be reckoned with. We can get you an audience with these important people. So come to our training programs because we deliver substance. Jaguar has got a very, very interesting story to tell you here. Um, one of my friends is a mystery shopper for a lot of different brands. And she was checking out Jaguar's training. So what she did was deliberately dress down. She didn't look like she could afford uh, anything close to Jaguar. But she went to the showroom anyway and she said she was just amazed. She was just blown over because he never even asked her or talked to her about price or anything. All he did was give her a Jaguar experience, explain to her what the car did that other cars didn't do, took her for a drive. And so she said, wow, she really felt treated very, very well. And she said, even coming back to the showroom, he never even talked about selling. So what do you think he has gained there? He has gained someone who is an unpaid salesman for him <laughs> because <laughs> he promoted the brand experience. And this is really how we build brand value. It's about creating knowledge about the experience. So here are some questions. I'm a trainer, by the way, and that's why it's the kind of educational. I actually give you things that you're supposed to ask yourself. So <laughs> you have to ask yourself, what is the core value of your brand? Who will pay for it? Can you give them something more without diluting the essence? And are you even mentally ready to innovate and create new products or perhaps extend the services of existing ones? Now, this is the area where many companies either fail or succeed. You know, people sometimes just do not want to move forward. So, 
So here's an example of moving from advertising to sales. If you walk around the Klang Valley, here's a very, very interesting scenario you will see. Next to the well-established 7-Elevens, you will see the local KK supermarket. And this is excellent brand positioning because what they've done is they've put themselves right where the customer is. So they're getting the customers. Same colors, Here's, this is an example, a red and green logo, but different. 7-Elevens um, are convenience stores, KK supermarkets are a one-stop superstore which sell things cheap. So that's the slight differentiation. And of course, as a customer, you can choose which one you want to go to, but you know, by positioning themselves, of course you can imagine. Um, I was talking to someone who was involved in the deal of how they acquired these, these pieces of property right next door. And of course, that's not only very strategic, it's also it's very expensive. And obviously, calculated. So the deliverables of a brand are how are customers actually benefiting from your brand? Are your products and services aligned with your core values and what is your next step towards expansion of your profit? Now here is an example of brand dissonance, what we call brand dissonance. We talk about brand ha harmony. And this Malaysia Airlines. I still hear people everywhere saying they love to fly Malaysia Airlines. They love the service, they love the way they're treated, they love the food. But Malaysia Airlines started out, of course it's a national carrier, we know that's the brand. It started out by being a six-star airline, and then it decided it wanted to move into the budget area. And then I was um, in Penang a few weeks ago and was thoroughly confused myself because um, there was someone, I, I, th I thought that they had moved all their budget services to Firefly, but apparently they haven't. They're still at MAS doing budget. So you see, this, when, when people don't know what your brand is, what happens is you leave room for competitors to come in. So that's brand dissonance. So I'm going to share with you some um, other examples of branding. Uh, this is the Aryan restaurant, which is not very far from here. Its essence is rich and tasty food and it wanted to create a competitive advantage. So we sat down and looked at, you know, rich and tasty food like biryanis are really not associated with health. So what we did was we also um, developed a healthy menu where you prove that it's healthy and uh, it's, it's right there on the menu, Why? So, so that a whole family can go, those who are health conscious and not, and everybody can enjoy themselves. Uh, they have access to fat loss consultants if they want, and they also give donations of food to the underprivileged. They've been doing that every year. Excuse me. And that, of course, is their cause-related branding project. Another example is MPH, you know, very old, very established, also wanting to rebrand. They want to retain their customers. They want to retain what they are known for, but also move out and capture the young people. So what we did was we did a workshop for them to look at their service touch points. Service touch points are actually where customers engage with the brand. Uh, this is what we call service touch points. And then we moved on to the training of the people, the internal customers. Different touch points, by the way, will have different types of training because it's a different market segment, different niche. And we also looked at increasing the use of social media to increase their brand reach, brand reach, meaning you're reaching more people and also you're getting more feedback. And of course, these are all just wonderful ways of, of getting feedback, hearing what your customer wants, wants to, to say to you. So this is my own company, and this is our tagline, building human capital. So everything that my company does has to do with people. So all of these are different delivery channels, whether it's workshops or events or speaking tools, all of it uh, has to do with building people. And I offer a lot of free stuff as well. Uh, we, don't, we do not have thousands in our database, but it's okay. Freemium is, is good sometimes anyway, just, just so that people can try before, you know, and, and gain something from it. 
Uh, branding for more sales, if you're thinking about this, so you need to ask yourself now. How would you like to be perceived in the eyes of your customers? Is there a cause you can link up with? Lots of great causes around now. Cheap things like recycling, it doesn't have to be very expensive. Do something, a whole range of going green, which can be from cheap to expensive. And is there a market trend you can link up with? Uh, Mark, talking about market trends, we are now doing business electronically and through mobile. So, uh, our, la last week I told you MIM had this lunch for, for and, and the speaker was a deputy prime minister, and I was amazed. People are taking out their iPads, or they, you know, and, and it is like okay to do so now even at a, a posh lunch. People are taking their wireless devices everywhere with them. It's like a, a third arm. So here is uh, another way that I helped a company, which their program was in weight management. Their essence was that they were international, they have scientific evidence, and they gave personal testimonials. And so we did something by putting notes onto mobile phones for them. And so that anyone, so their, their customers anywhere in the world could have free access 24-7. And this, of course, is the latest trend in branding where you put apps on your phone and you really, really do make money while you sleep. Because, uh, of course, you can give free apps if you want to, but you can also charge. And you can charge from very little, from a dollar or two dollars. And people don't mind, you know, paying. And if, if you've got a large audience, well, that makes to a lot, lots of money. And that's how, of course, you get uh, instant millionaires and billionaires. Well, not quite instant, but there was a guy here who founded a company in 2009, Silicon Valley guy, uh, and in 2012, they are worth a billion, multi-billion dollars, IT-based, of course. And, and you have in-house websites, people who look after your website, mm. You can hire webmasters. I, I do have someone in my sphere where they will design the website and they will also you know, maintain it for you for a fee every month. So they can either train your staff to upload things or they will do it for you if, you're, if you don't have that type of staff. Can be done as well. Nowadays, especially in, in Kuala Lumpur, you have people doing almost anything and everything. Piecemeal. You do not have to pay for nine to five. You just pay by the job. And that's what makes it very, very cost efficient. Sign on concept. Name, or name as a brand, because your name is for people also. Uh, my name is my brand. Is it true? So how do you take into account? Oh, definitely, because um, if you drive around any part of Kuala Lumpur or anywhere else, you know, we have lots of excellent little roadside stalls, right? Uh, they just set up and they will sell things. You will have Pa Ali's, Pau, you will have Mat City's, Kue. So that's a brand. They may have one supplier, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. That is the brand. And um, it does need to be trademarked because, you know, there, there's another good story about two Indian restaurants uh, out in PJ and one was doing very, very well. So the other one sat up beside it and also called itself by the same name. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, they're still quarreling over it. And so they're both called Sri Pandian. So, yeah, brand, branding is fascinating. Branding is about you. Yes. Branding is about you. Does someone want to ask me what's the most important aspect of branding? Because I'm dying to tell you. <laughs> it's, it's the personal brand. The, the personal brand. You know, when people engage with you, and then that is the reason to want to come back, or to trust you, or to stay away. And, it's, it's true. So how we project ourselves, how we, we maintain a relationship, that's really very, very important. Personal branding, especially today, where the corporate sector is shrinking, a lot of people are outsourcing, is very, very important. Reliability. That, 
well, that's another story, but you know, that's where se senior management are really always custodians of the brand, uh, whether corporate or in politics or, yeah, it, very important, personal branding. I really don't claim to be an expert in anything. I, I do have a lot of experience in a lot of things, and I can help give ideas, yeah. I, I can help to give ideas. Which one is better? Well, you need to go back uh, to the story of Coke and, and Pepsi, because Coke came first. And Coca-Cola got its name by, uh, from the coca leaf, and the, the Coke Cola nut, and that's how it got its name. And it really was uh, medicinal. It was to settle your stomach. So when Pepsi came along, they wanted to compete, and they called themselves Pepsi Cola because Pepsi aimed at reducing the peptic acid, dyspepsia, in, in your um, stomach. So, so that's, that's how it got its name. And at one round, they didn't know what they were drinking, and another round, they knew what the labels were. And what is, this is a classic, it's a classic, you can, you can look it up and it's right there. When they didn't know what they were drinking, they said they preferred Pepsi Cola. And when they didn't, when they knew, when they said, what, do you, what would you like to drink, they chose Coca-Cola. And that's the power of branding. And that is why Coca-Cola today is still the most expensive brand in the world. In other words, if you wanted to buy the Coke name, uh, it, has, it has ranged, it just in the past few years, between 67 and 72 uh, billion US dollars. Okay, perception is a uh, uh, It's what drives sales. And, and it's, it's difficult to, to answer that in a short, because what drives sales is the experience, is the feeling of belonging, it's like Harley Davidson. You know, what is a Harley Davidson? It's a sound, it's a throbbing, it's a club, it's a, a sense of belonging, <laughs> you, you know? So difficult, brands are, it's very emotional. It's like getting to know someone. My pleasure. Before we let you go, I'm sure the audience probably still has a lot more. <laughs> My pleasure, my pleasure. Ah, this one has got a feel to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Farida Rohani from Beyond Brand. <laughs> jealous by telling them what you're getting. Um, the fabulous team at the Mikasa Hotel, thank you Samantha and her team who have sponsored two nights stay um, at their fantastic hotel down the road. That is for you and also um, two, two months virtual office um, complimentary from Surfcore. Yeah, to come back. Anywhere in Southeast Asia so you have a lot of options. Thank you. Okay, so thank congratulations. You are right about the brand here because I'll never forget Nitya for the brand that you represent. Yeah. Um, feel free to take a look around. If you do have any questions or you'd like to see any offices, for example, um, let me know. I'll be happy to assist you. Um, the bar will be open until 8 and we've got a whole spread of food in the boardroom. So please feel free to help yourself network mingle. Um, but before we do that, thank you so much Evelyn for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us.
We do appreciate it. I'm sure that everyone will be keen to run off and you know think about how they are placing themselves in the market and you know how they are really representing their brand. Thank you, very so, much. Thank you very much. Thank you so and here much. is a very big. Alright. <coughs> Please enjoy everyone and thank you very much for coming.